Sean, the early universe was this hot plasma soup, which, at least to my eyes, looks completely uniform. Yet today we look around, we see books and chairs and people, enormous complexity. It's a word we use. How do you define complexity, and how did this happen? Actually, no one agrees on the best way to define complexity. So that's one of the problems that we have. And it's probably not that there isn't a definition. It's that there are different notions of complexity that are relevant to different circumstances. Mm. But you're right. We can look around and see that the world is complex now in a way that it wasn't back near the Big Bang. So at the very least, something is happening. We can ask what that is. The favorite definition of complexity that physicists have goes back to a guy named Kolmogorov, who says, well, it just takes longer to describe mm -hmm. complex things mm -hmm. rather than simple things. Mm -hmm. So if I tell you that the early universe was hot, dense, smooth, with tiny variations from place to place, I've told you everything there is that you need to know. There's really nothing else specific mm -hmm. that is required to explain that universe. But to explain our universe today, not only do you have to talk about galaxies, stars, planets, and so forth, but you have to give me the contents of every individual book around <laughs> us. It's an enormously long description. So in that sense, there's no question that complexity has increased as the universe has, has gone on. Yeah. Okay. So what does that mean? How could that happen, especially if we have a, a universe in which the second law of thermodynamics tells us that everything increases towards disorder? So we have on an on, 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 a, on a total scale, everything going to disorder, and now you're telling me from this order, uh, uh, from this simplicity, we now have complexity. So you go from order to disorder and simplicity to complexity? Sounds illogical. That's right. It's not illogical, <laughs> and it's not illogical for one reason, because we tend to confuse the idea of simplicity with order, mm -hmm. complexity with disorder, or vice versa. I don't know what you want to do with it. The truth is they're not related right. to each other. So think about it this way. The early universe was simple and low entropy. It was very, very organized. There was a very, imagine taking all the stuff in the universe today and delicately arranging it in a one cubic centimeter region <laughs> of space so that nothing overlapped. That's very particular, very low entropy. Also very simple. It's easy to describe. Now, as the universe expands, the entropy goes up. It relaxes into a more disorderly, more favorite configuration. It becomes complex at the same time. But now let's keep going toward the future. Stars will shine for a while, but eventually they will burn out. They'll give up their fuel. They'll fall into black holes. Those black holes will evaporate away, and you're left with nothing but empty space. The entropy of the universe keeps going up, up and up and up. That's all the entropy ever does. Mm -hmm. But at the end of it, you have a very simple state. You have empty space. There's nothing there. I have just described it to you entirely. So you're claiming then that this period of time, for some reason, is the height of complexity, even though it's the midpoint of sorts, of entropy. So entropy has gone from very low to very high, but in this midpoint, we have this peak of complexity, and in and, and, and early universe, it was very low, and the far universe, it's very low. That's right. It's not correct to associate complexity with either high entropy or low entropy. What complexity requires is changing entropy, mm. is growing mm -hmm. entropy. Mm -hmm. So life on Earth, for example, can exist because we get energy from the sun and we give it back to the universe. We give and get the same amount of energy. Energy is conserved. We're, we don't have life on Earth because we're using up energy. We have life on Earth because we're taking that energy from the sun in a low entropy form and giving it back to the universe in a high entropy form. And using that delta, that change, to create the complexity? The increase in entropy allows complexity to thrive, if mm. you like. We eat, right? We metabolize. We take stuff, energy from the sun. We put it to good use. We give it back to the universe in this disorderly, useless form. And that allows us to maintain this very specific, complicated, highly organized, complex configuration that we call human beings. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it disturbs me a little bit that why should I be alive during this time of, uh, of, of high complexity? I, I obviously couldn't have been alive in the other periods. That's good. You answered your own question, right? In the, in the non-complex periods in the history of the universe, there's nothing there to have TV shows and ask questions. There's no complexity, so there's no organization, there's no reflection, there's no information processing. So complexity is really key to everything that we think of as human life. And to get complexity, you need 
entropy to be growing. So it's actually all interconnected in a very, very dependent way. But based upon this arrow of entropy, if you will, that peak of complexity that allows what we think is normal life to exist is a one-time event because you can't go back the other way. Our best understanding of the universe says we started simple and low entropy. We are growing in entropy towards increasing disorder. Complexity increases for a while mm. and then will go away. Mm. So their best current understanding of the universe says that there's a finite number of years left for complex, intelligent life to have its day in the universe. It's a many, many years. It's actually much further toward the future than toward the past, but it's not infinite. Yeah, and um, it really doesn't matter the scale that because uh, eventually it's all going to be very small in, in the great expanse of, of, of time. So um, that just seems disturbing. I mean, not, not to me personally, because I mean, uh, I'll have long uh, disappeared. But in terms of understanding where we are, it just seems, it just seems intuitively odd that there would be this, this little peak of complexity and this vast uh, movement of entropy. Well, human beings have a finite lifetime. So does the universe in some sense. So does the interesting part of the history of the universe. Remember, from a physics point of view, the surprising thing is that there is any era in the history of the universe when complexity is allowed at all. We mm -hmm. should be at maximum disorder. Mm -hmm. We should be like all of the air in the room being equally spread and nothing interesting happening. So we're fortunate that there is any deviation from equilibrium, from perfect disorder, and we're taking advantage of that deviation to exist and to think about it. So it's not that I should be uh, upset that there's this one time of complexity. I should be thrilled that there's exactly even any complexity right. yes. at all. Be thankful you're here at all. That's right. <laughs> okay, but then if we look back at the early universe in, in a period of low entry, because I have to have this delta, this change of entropy to get the complexity, uh, why then did I start with the low entropy? Well, we would all like to know why the universe started with low entropy. That's one of the single biggest puzzles in modern science mm -hmm. and modern physics and cosmology. Mm -hmm. If you allow me to to assume that the early universe started with low entropy, then many, many nice things so follow. Then you can that. generate the complexity. That's right. But if you then we, you're very right to ask, so why did the early universe start that way? Nobody knows the answer to that question. If anyone tells you they know the answer, you should be skeptical. <laughs> But that's okay. I mean, that's. Uh, what are we, some options? Well, we want to know why the early universe had low entropy. So we have to either come up with a reason why the universe began that way, or a scenario in which that was not the beginning. That what we see as the beginning of the universe, the Big Bang, was actually a moment in a much longer history of the universe. So my favorite explanation is that our observable universe is a tiny part of a much bigger multiverse, mm -hmm. of a much bigger ensemble. And the overall evolution of that ensemble creates places like us that start with low entropy and grow and have complex life in between. E even if that multiverse has greater entropy in, in, in the totality, it, it has pockets of low entropy? That That's right. So the idea would be that the way the, un the multiverse creates more and more entropy is by giving rise to pockets where the entropy starts low and then grows. And which, we just are one of those spin-offs. Which can generate its brief moment of complexity. And there we are. That's right. Yes. So, so we are sort of a side effect <laughs> of the universe trying to increase its entropy.